Hello, this week's video is one which has been much requested. It's all about dressing your body shape. Now I did do one um, some while ago which has been and still is my most popular video that I've ever made and that was about um, dressing an apple shaped body and a big bust so I will link that for you here as well. Um, this one does contain some additional information um, but I did ask for some questions about what you wanted to know about dressing your body shape so I'm going to go through a few of the ones that I received I haven't got time probably to do all of them but I'm going to get through as many as I can so the first thing which came up was um, about proportions a lot of people have mentioned being short-waisted but one person did actually ask how to know whether you're long-waisted or short-waisted and um, so I'm going to pop in a diagram here to explain how that works. If you look at the picture you can see that we've got three women who are the same height. So whether you're long-waisted or short-waisted depends on where your um, waist comes between your shoulders and what we call the thigh break. So if you were to lift your leg, it's where your leg bends. The middle lady's waist is equal distance between her shoulder and her thigh break. The lady on the left-hand side has a much longer distance between her shoulder and her waist than she does between her waist and her thigh break. So she's actually long-waisted. So she's long in the upper part of her body. And then the lady on the right has quite a short distance between um, her shoulder and her waist. So almost her waist is right under her bust. And this is quite common if you're large busted as well, because you tend to not have a lot of space between your bust and your waist. But what it does mean is that you tend to have longer legs. So you can see that her thigh break comes up much higher. So she has longer legs than the lady who has the long body, if that makes sense. Now on me, I'm actually short-waisted, so from my shoulders to my waist, and my waist sits just about here, and I can really only get about one hand between my waist and my bust, so I'm actually short-waisted. So let's move on to some questions about how to dress these different proportions. So the first question was from somebody who said they had a long body and short legs and they want to know how to dress that. Now, if you do have a shorter leg, ideally you don't want to have any details on your legs. So things like cargo trousers aren't a great idea because they will um, cut across the leg. You can wear cropped trousers, but ideally with a cropped trouser, what you want to do is, is wear a heel of some kind or perhaps a wedge or one of the new sort of fat form shoes and make sure that it's the same colour as your trousers. And ideally you want to have as few as possible sort of lines going across the leg because everywhere where you have a line, it sort of chops it up a little bit and makes the leg look even shorter. Now I'm also going to slot a picture in here to show you um, how to dress an out one outfit quite simply to make the legs look longer. So in this picture I've got the same pair of trousers and the same top but in the first image I've actually tucked the top in and the trousers I've chosen are a pair that are quite high waisted so they are bringing the waist up a little bit higher and you're and by tucking that top in, you're sort of cutting the body shorter. And I've also put with that a shorter length jacket. And you can see that I've got shoes there that have got a wedge that are making the leg look longer. In the second picture, as I said, exactly the same top and trousers, but this time I've untucked the top and I've put a long jacket with it. And I think you can see that visually that is immediately shortening the leg. And again, with a pair of flat shoes, it's doing the same thing. So I hope that sort of answers that question about how to dress um, a longer body and you can see there I put a pair of cargo trousers again ideally these aren't great for a shorter leg because they've got pockets down them and they're cutting off the leg 
Now the next question about um, body proportions was somebody who wanted to wear a belt. They have a rectangular body which means that they don't have um, a defined waistline and they also have a short body. So with this example again what we want to do is lengthen the body. So you want to wear the belt not on your actual waist but lower down. So if you were to put a belt on a pair of low waist jeans or lower waist trousers and tuck in your top then that's going to elongate that part of the body as well. The other thing that you can do if you don't have a waistline and this applies to um, women who are perhaps apple shaped as well as the rectangle is to choose a belt that doesn't actually sort of fit tightly around the waist. And so something like this that kind of sits and hangs a little bit lower than the waist, especially if you're short-waisted, again you're elongating that part of the body. And also if you fasten it round the waist and then have a piece hanging that's hanging down long, again you're creating that long line to the body. So if you are short-waisted but you still want to wear a belt, then ideally you want to wear it lower than your waist. The other trick that I quite often use is I will wear, um, because I don't have a, a waist anymore, I will wear something like this and then I'll wear the belt underneath a jacket or a top because then what it does is it gives the illusion of a waist where there isn't one and I will slot in a picture here to show you how that works. Okay then I had a few questions about apple shaped bodies. I had a question about which tops to wear for an apple shaped body and I also had a question about somebody who um, is short waisted and has no waist. So those kind of go in together. So I have an apple shaped body. I also have a big bust, which was another question. I'm gonna slot in here some pictures to show you how I dress my shape. So you'll see that what I quite often do is I will wear um, a looser fitting, say tunic style top, and then I'll put something over the top of it that is a longer line. So it's lengthening my body and slimming it down. And, um, you will also see that quite often I'll wear either a scarf or a necklace, which is again lengthening the body. As I mentioned, the other thing with um, women who have an apple shape, they quite often have great legs. So showing off the legs is a really good thing to do. So I might wear something that's a little bit more voluminous on the top, and then I will wear something that is slimmer on the bottom to balance that out. And what that does is even though you might have volume on the top, and I'm doing it today with the top that I've got on, I've got a pair of slim leg trousers on it, and this is a longer um, length tunic top, is because the um, legs look slim, it kind of gives the illusion that everything else underneath is as slim as that. So it's all smoke and mirrors with dressing your body shape. It's creating an illusion of something that perhaps isn't already there. Now, again, talking about tops for um, apple shape, this kind of thing is really good. I really like Maasai for their shape. Some of them are a little bit shapeless, so avoid those. But the ones I like tend to sort of fit on the bust area, but then skim over the rest of the body. So they're not really voluminous, but they and they do have some shape to them. These are their bias cut tops. So if you look on their website, they do um, put their clothes into different shapes. They do quite a good job of that. And um, so something like this, I've got probably four or five different tops like this. They're really flattering. So I've got three tops here for an apple shaped body. The first one has got a little bit of gathering around the neckline which allows it to sort of ease over the bust. It's a straighter fit but it's got a little bit of volume to it. But as I said I'd avoid anything that's too voluminous because it just makes you look bigger. The middle one is kind of fitting around the bust area and so that works really well and then it's got that sort of looseness over the tummy area. And the same thing with the third one, you've got shaping over the bust which gives you shape, it comes in a little bit at the waist and then it sort of flows out gently over the tummy. But none of these are voluminous tent like tops um, which I think quite often we tend to think we need to be wearing and actually we don't. 
Now somebody else was also asking about um, having the middle-aged belly as she put it and um, the fact that it made skirts and trousers roll down or um, too uncomfortable on the waistline. So what I would say for this is avoid fitted waistlines because they aren't your friend. You're going to feel really uncomfortable in them. Ideally what you want is something that is perhaps an elasticated waist. It doesn't have to be frumpy. I know we sort of think about um, our mothers or grandmothers wearing elasticated waist but they are so much more comfortable than a fitted waistband. I rarely if ever will wear something that has a fitted waistband. I will always go for something that is either elasticated or just pull on. So um, that's ideal and also something that sort of sits flat onto the body. So I've got a few examples to show you here. You'll have seen these before. These are a pair of culottes from um, Phase 8. What I like about these is they sit flat across the front but then they have the elastication on the back. So that kind of thing is great if you have a bit of a tummy. This one you'll have seen I bought recently. Again, it's got the elasticated waist. And I would wear it either with a little top over it to cover the tummy or I would tuck something into it and kind of really blouse it over so that you're not seeing the waistband. And again, this one, which is a couple of years old, it has a nice flat waist, but it does have a wide elastic inside it. This one's from New Look and they do similar things every year and great on a budget as well. And then with trousers, you'll know I love my Eileen Fisher trousers. They work really well on an apple-shaped body. But I've also got a couple of um, silk pairs here, which are from Weekend Max Mara. And again, they've got that elasticated waist and they're just so comfortable to wear. So those are all things that work really well if you have a bit of a tummy. So as I said, avoid that fixed waistband and go for something that is a little bit more comfortable to wear. Now again, talking about big busts and apple shapes, I had another question about what kind of jackets to wear for an apple shaped body. So I'm going to slot in a picture again for you here. It's for a large bust and someone who's curvy. Um, you don't really want to go for a structured blazer because it's going to feel too restrictive. I have this problem. I would love to wear a, um, a structured blazer, but they just don't work on me. I feel like I'm completely encased in a straight jacket. So um, I've got four different ones here. Um, the first one, the yellow one, you will have seen quite a few times. Again, it's from Maasai. It's got a lovely sort of loose fit to it. It's a linen viscose, but it drapes really nicely. And then the middle, uh, the second one is from Christmas, a velvet one. And you can see it's got a little tie that pulls it into the bust area. So again, it's giving shape rather than being too voluminous. And then the cream one is another version of a Maasai jacket. Again, it's that same sort of fabric. It's nice and loose and relaxed. And then the other trick, which I'll quite often do, you'll have seen me do this an awful lot, is to wear a shirt dress as a jacket. And again, that works really well. And it also works really well if I want to wear it with a shorter top as I am in this picture. So I'll keep that long length going with a long pendant necklace and I've got the longer length of the jacket and that does work really well. So this is my um, Maasai jacket. I'll bring it closer so that you can see the texture of it, but it does just drape really, really nicely. It's not fitted anywhere, but it does have a little bit of shape. It does come in. And then the other one that um, I really like is a jersey jacket. Again, these work really well if you've got um, a large bust or you're curvy. But because it has that sort of stretch in it, it does work well on a curvy body as well. Now I had another question from somebody who said they're actually mixed shapes. So they're quite curvy on the top, but they're more of a column shape on the bottom. And this is quite common, and this is why it's quite hard to sort of pigeonhole yourself into um, one of the traditional body shapes. Because, you know, we are all different. 
So for this example, you want to follow the tips that I've given for curvy bodies for your top half. And fabric is really important here. So softer, more um, fluid fabrics, fabrics like silk, like viscose, like soft cottons, jersey, will work well on the curvy part of the body. And then you can wear stiffer, straighter fabrics on the bottom half of the body if it's straight. If you've got great hips and legs, then show those off. So, you know, a top that has a little bit of fluidity to it with a pair of jeans, perhaps. Or you could wear a pair of straight leg tailored trousers um, with something like one of my um, viscose tops. So it's thinking about um, wearing straighter and crisper shapes on the bottom half and showing off um, the slim parts and then following those tips for the curvier body on the top half. And then the final question I had was about dresses. And um, she said, a dress for a short-waisted, big boob rectangle. So this is somebody who, again, we've got the short-waisted in there. This is quite common. It is quite common with a large bust as well. Um, but she's got a straight body without a waist. And this is quite tricky. So I've picked out a few um, dress shapes, which I'm going to slot in here to show you. Now the first one is a shirt dress and um, because she's got a large bust I would go for the v-neck line. Again with anything like this you can unbutton it as far as you want to. You could put a little cami in there with another colour as well. It's drawing the eye up and away from the bust. But with a shirt dress, because she's a rectangle and she's short-waisted, ideally you want to have a dress that's got a removable belt because then you can either wear the belt slightly lower so that it elongates the body a bit or you can put your own belt on there uh, as well. And I would say with a rectangular body, um, you want to go for a quite a thin belt so it's not sort of it's giving some emphasis but it's not really showing that there isn't a waist there if that makes sense. The second dress has again it's that sort of button down the front shape but this one has got um, a little bit of um, shaping into the waist and then the third one is really clever because this one has a little bit of ruching into that front placket of the button the buttons so it is giving the illusion of a waist there and it's fitted over the bust and it's fitted over the slim hips as well but it's giving that little bit of an indentation to make it look like there's a waist but because it's not actually a belt what tends to happen is if you have a belt on a dress and you're short-waisted it always comes in the wrong place so this one kind of eases out that waistline um, and it will work really well for short-waisted uh, rectangle. So those are some of the questions that I received. I will probably do another video because I have had an awful lot of questions and I just wanted to keep this fairly condensed. But um, if you have a question that you would like answered, then please leave it in the comments section and I will gather them all together until I have enough for another video. But in the meantime, if you did like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, then I would love it if you did. And if you click on the little bell, you'll get notified whenever I make a new video. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.